Hi guys! Have you ever wondered what games user research means? Hi, I'm Veronica Zamido. I'm the lead senior UX researcher at Electronic Arts. Hi, I'm Nicholas Sweeney. I'm the user research director at Ubisoft Montreal. What is the point to have a games user research lab? Why should I spend money in it? Nowadays, making games involves having to test uh, for usability and play testing. And those are the major reasons that uh, a, a games user research lab is going to help at any company. Uh, it is making the best games possible, is bringing the the players, the users, to this development experience and having a very user-centric design on how we want to make games. Well, the goal to have a game user research lab and a game user research team uh, is to have people who are dedicated to give you insights and uh, about the players and what, how they play, how they behave, uh, also what they might like or not like, and really to allow your dev teams to make player uh, and data-informed decisions while they develop the game. It's going to be fantastic to actually improve and make sure that the game is achieving the best potential that it can have. So it is definitely an investment that is going to pay off on having a great game. If you are not designers or programmers, how could you improve the quality of our games anyway? Yeah, a researcher is, is not a designer, it's not a programmer. It's actually uh, a very unique, specialized individual with a skill set that is going to help to really understand the users. So ultimately, games are being made to have other people play them. So it's bringing that the players first. So in order to, to understand what these players are, are feeling and experiencing with the game, you need a, someone who has that skills and that specializations to really understand them. Clearly we are improving the quality of the game by proxy, so we do inform those guys, the designers, the programmers, uh, monetization people, the game director, uh, about, you know, they have design intentions and they have to confront it into, uh, in front of a player and then we can see if it holds up or not, if it's as successful and, and if it works uh, like they, they, they would like it to, to work. And, you know, iterating on this, we can see if the experience of the player uh, improves over time, uh, test after test. How could we include the game's user research in our very busy production planning? Making games is, is at really fast pace. It's something very common in, in the game industry. So a, a good games user researcher is going to be included in that development cycle where that business schedule is going to continue and it actually is going to be helping to, to offload the understanding of the, of the players and, and assessing and measuring that that design experience is actually being matched by what the players feel and experience with the game. So they are going, it's going to be part of the same team. They're going to work all, all together, the researcher, the designer. They're going to be sharing that information so the, the researcher understands completely what the, the, the intended experience is, collect that data, analyze it, and put in a very crystal clear findings for the designers to know how players are responding to the game. So in, being included in the development production and uh, in the schedule is a question of proximity, so sitting with the team is uh, the best. And also it's, it's up to us as user researchers to find the ways to integrate ourselves. Uh, one of the good ways is to uh, match the, the test cycle with the sprints and dev cycle and also to have a good plan from the get-go. So to have a strategic plan and a schedule that will follow the dev uh, schedule and pipeline. So it's going to be a, a, a very close relationship where information flows freely and it's going to be incorporated within the regular timeline. So it's not adding extra work, it's actually putting things more streamlined for, for better production. 
How could I see the result of your work and the progression of the games concretely? As the games have been tested over and over, there are going to be reports explaining what are those key findings, where are the major problems identified, or what are actually the big wins, the things that are working as they are supposed to do. So they are uh, very easy to identify in the reports where they are outlined on the different issues, how much of a severity it is, if something like is critical or something is a, a low severity, or again, like a, a good win, something that is intact. That is something that is shared with all the stakeholders, all those point of contacts. And definitely there is also a debrief where people can talk about it and think about it with implication of those findings and actually what are going to be the actions to be taken to help fix them if needed. So how you see the improvement uh, through our work is I think through the different uh, iterations and different tests and if the decisions that were taken by the designers and the, the dev team based on our data is actually improving the game. Uh, so it's not just a matter of, of what we do, but again, it's, it's how people in the dev team use the data we provide. How can I build a lab? What kind of professionals can I hire? I think it needs to be adapted to how the, the, the studio works, right? So it's uh, for a small studio, I wouldn't recommend necessarily have a big team. Uh, depends on the platforms we're working on. So a mobile game doesn't necessarily have the same exact needs as a console games. Um, I think what you want to have is a team that can uh, really give a, a kind of a 360 approach to what the, the dev team is doing. And also that you, know, you invest in where the, the, there's the, the biggest gain for the team. So it might be more towards uh, data analytics or it might be towards you know, uh, UI and heuristics and pure usability. It really depends of, of what you're building. So for building a lab, it's going to depend on what the game team needs, what the company needs, and then based on that, how much of any scales. For making a lab, really, the only thing that you need is a pen and paper to take notes and have track of those findings. So that's very minimum. There's not really, it, you don't need to have a lab to do UX research. Now, if you have a, a lot of information that needs to be collected, maybe just say, you know, a single station could be fantastic for one-on-one -on -one sessions and, and collect that data, and might, maybe that's enough. Or you can go like full on and have a big lab with 30 people where they come in and they are playing at once and you have a, a, a larger sample at once, uh, which is fantastic. So you have a, a full range of options from pen and paper to one station to boom, massive lab with a lot of people. And of course, that the bigger you go, the more specializations you're going to need. So for instance, someone who is very tech savvy, who could be a, like a lab technician to take care of the equipment, that the builds are being pushed properly uh, on the consoles or the PCs, that everything runs smoothly. Are you going to record those sessions? Are you going to live stream them to, to the game team to watch it? Uh, you know, the researcher feeling can have a good line of sight to the different stations to make sure that everything is going on track. So the, the bigger you go, definitely the more specialization you're going to require. So what I would recommend is look into people who have experience and uh, knowledge in psychology, cognitive psychology or experimental, uh, people with an HCI background, with a human factor uh, engineering experience, uh, that kind of people. It's, it's really, I think, these guys who have the most uh, abilities to provide you with the right information.